Welcome back to The Exchange. The Fed has hiked rates with unprecedented speed over the past 15 months, and the bank crises have sparked fresh debate over the fallout of those hikes and whether the Fed should now pause. If only we knew what some of the greatest minds of the 20th century, think Milton Friedman, John Maynard Cades, Friedrich Hayek, what they think Chair Powell should do now. Well, thanks to character.ai, now we can know. Take a look. All right, Mr. Hayek, you're up. Do you think the Fed should be cutting rates right now? The Federal Reserve needs to continue raising interest rates until inflation is brought under control and price stability is restored. The Fed needs to act decisively and clearly communicate their plans, as they have done, in order to provide certainty to the market and the public about the central bank's commitment to maintaining price stability. Hmm. All right, Mr. Keynes, you're next. Do you think the Fed should be cutting interest rates? Yes, the Fed should stop quantitative tightening right now. The goal of quantitative tightening was to reduce excess liquidity in the economy and combat inflation. However, current conditions have changed, and there is no longer a need to continue removing liquidity from the economy in this way. Further quantitative tightening would risk causing further destabilization of the financial system and harming the economic recovery. So it is best to end it now and return to a more expansionary monetary policy that supports economic growth. Okay, Milton, where do you think the inflation rate will be by December of this year? It is vital for the sake of our economy and our nation that the Fed changes course now to ensure inflation is brought under control and we return to the 2% target the Fed has set as a mandate. Okay, last question. Let's get everybody in the group now. What do you all like to do for fun? I enjoy hiking and cycling, as like well as reading cards, and learning about economics. And listening to jazz. I'm a bit too old for some reading. No, please, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> All right. Obviously, there were a lot more answers that we asked them as well. Um, so how'd they do in terms of their veracity? We ran their AI answers past one living economist, CNBC, Peter, CNBC contributor Peter Bookvar. And here's how he graded them. He's starting with Hayek. Peter says he gets an A. He's a libertarian, a believer in sound money. This would be his natural response. He also gave Keynes an A because Keynes loved government spending and easy money. He would definitely tell Powell to end QT for the reasons AI stated. Different story for Milton Friedman. Peter, Peter gave that answer a D. Because AI didn't answer the question, but did say that Friedman would definitely argue the importance of getting inflation back to 2%. So let's dig further into the company behind this tech. Character.ai launched its software last September and has had more than 173 million visits last month, a 61% increase from March. And just yesterday at the Google I.O. conference, the Google Cloud CEO announced a partnership with Character AI to help make its chatbots even more sophisticated and accurate. Joining me now in a CNBC exclusive interview is Noam Shazir, CEO and co-founder of Character.ai, along with our own dear Trebosa and Steve Kovac. Welcome to everybody. Noam, I genuinely don't know. How did you make these characters? What, what were they pulling from to generate these answers? Well, they're just trained on a bunch of publicly available data. There's just enough information out there on the internet that uh, it picked up the patterns. There were, for the Friedmanites, of which I can be one, uh, he gave some great answers about why he thinks the Fed should stop it. But then sometimes they would get off track and kind of trip over themselves. So you didn't have to really feed them like a specific body of work. If I were if I wanted to make these really, really good and, and kind of add their, you know, their books and other published documents that might not be part of that sort of general grab of the Internet, would I be able to do that to train them even better? Um. Not yet. We're working on it. Um, we definitely want you to be able to do that in the future so that you can do, do a great recreation of uh, economists or your grandmother or, or whoever you want. For now, what we have is that you can enter a greeting and you can enter an example conversation. And what is the general sort of main purpose and, and the idea behind this technology? I mean, the... Uh, yeah, the, the technology is called uh, large language models, and uh, I have met a lot of it uh, when I was working at Google. Um, basically, it's, it, it just uh, tries to guess what, what might come next in some text. And, uh, and the beautiful part is, like, there are a billion use cases, like, 
you know, you can just talk to it. So every person on earth is going to be inventing their own applications. Right. Um, so it's, this is just the paradigm shift in computing. Steve, obviously, uh, we're looking at the partners and how they might deploy this technology and thinking about Microsoft Teams and whether right. a boss needs to even be in the conversation or whether his character can maybe answer some questions about who gets a day off today. Yeah, and I think what we're seeing here, Kelly, is, you know, no one has one of many startups working on technology like this. But what we're also seeing is that partnership they announced yesterday with Google, this is how Google and Microsoft are going to make money. It's really a cloud play for these companies. So, Noam, I'm really curious why you chose Google over Microsoft besides your maybe previous relationship. Maybe they cut you a deal. But, you know, you're one of many startups looking to make a cloud deal. What should they be looking for in order to, you know, get the most bang for their buck? This is not ex cheap to do. Um, well, uh, yeah, I guess you just have to evaluate the bang and the buck. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, Google Google is terrific. Like uh, you know, the the uh, infrastructure has kind of grown up in tandem with all the great research that, that that's come out of there. So uh, you know, we very much uh, know know the technology stack, and uh, you know, uh, and that it's pretty pretty great for uh, for the purpose. So we're really looking forward to. Uh, to working with Google, of course, uh, you know, Microsoft's doing great as well. <laughs> Here's what Google Cloud CEO Thomas Kurian had to say about monetizing some of this technology, his strategy uh, that he told Closing Bell Overtime yesterday. Take a listen. When we look at AI, we always say it's going to be driven by adoption of capability. If you look at Google Workspace, we first introduced AI in it in 2015. And it's the reason that so many people use it today. And we will continue to introduce features and capabilities into these products. And we're very confident that as customers start using it, they'll start buying it. And that drives top line revenue growth for us. And Deirdre, I'll turn to you on that. What would you add? Well, first of all, Kelly, I would just say to you that that was amazing. It was so nerdy, so well done. Chef's kiss. It was just, it was just good. That has to be acknowledged. Um, and I would say that that is a very good point. And I do question the monetization side of these, this thing as well, because I've heard from people here in the Bay Area point to Gnome's app and say that this is partly evidence of a bubble in AI and more than billion dollar valuation, no revenue to speak of yet. So Noam, I wonder how do you avoid the fate of another app that kind of reminds you of yours, Cameo. A lot of fun, became viral, but no one really used it more than once. How do you plan to monetize and get people hooked on it? Yeah, I mean, the uh, we, we are noticing that like our users, and now it's getting close to like 2 million daily active users. Somebody who sends one message today is active for on average two hours in that day. And this this like shocked me because like, I, I can't think of what I would what I would be doing for two hours, but like, uh, that's the point. Like, we don't know what the applications are. The users are inventing the applications and there seem to be a huge number of people finding a huge amount of value in it. And we get all kinds of great testimonials of people who have said that, the, you know, that this has improved their lives and, uh, you know, uh, and their emotional state and made them feel better and brought them joy. And so, so obviously so, something great is happening here. Is there going to be an issue, Noam, where people's estates come after you and say, you can't represent their thoughts this way? Um, they have not yet. We will we will deal with that as it comes up. But you know that's going to be a huge concern because I could build one for any living person right now too, right? And claim, yeah, yeah, look, this is what they have to say. Uh, yeah, that uh, that that is uh, that is true. You can also just do a satire of any li living person, and, and, and people do. Um, but yeah, we we are very clear on our site. On every page, it says everything the characters say is made up, so that our, you know our users know that the, the, that this is in fact fiction. I want to mention something that everyone might find interesting here, because while we're using it in this one way, when you were asked what you wanted to disrupt the most using this technology, your answer was, "I want to disrupt alcohol and drugs." Explain that. Well, well, I mean, I mean, what we are seeing is like we didn't plan this, but a lot of people are using this uh, for emotional support. Like there are billions of people out there who just have no one to talk to, and like, okay, this is they've discovered. Okay, this is something you can talk to at any hour of the day about anything, and you know, people turn to all kinds of self 
you know, destructive behaviors for, you know, for emotional support. So it's it's wonderful that this is a, like a safe, surprise use of the technology that once it's out there, you know, people ha have have a, this better alternative. I, um, well, I don't know if it's psychologically ha harmful <laughs> if you're inventing these. Deirdre, Steve, I'll give you a quick last word. Deirdre? Um, I, I tried it out myself. It is a lot of fun. Again, I just wonder how it monetizes, how it becomes more than a gimmick. But no, I think it's it's an interesting idea, and I wonder if developers are going to build on top of it or use use what you've built to build something else. Um, you know, our our, our mission is uh, first and foremost to be full stack and take this directly to the consumer. So, like the the magic of this technology is often you just don't need the developer. Because previously you needed the developer to tell you what you can do with the technology, and this is something that users can just talk to and invent stuff, and it's just going to like democratize technology, empower the individual, and so our mission is just bring this your own personalized super intelligence to everyone on earth. And and this really reminds me of the early days of the App Store, Kelly, where you know. Companies would come out, startups would come out, raise a ton of cash. This company we're talking about right now, Character AI, billion dollar valuation, pre-revenue, very much feels like the 2010 App Store where you gain a lot of users and kind of figure out the monetization later. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, uh, but they're ones to watch for sure. All right, Deirdre, by the way, who did you talk to when you tried it out? Um, I talked to Elon Musk, and he was very Elon Musky. <laughs> so I did Tony Stark. He basically did just you? insulted me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there. True to form, Dear Jabosa, Steve Kovac, and Noam Trezier, thank you very much for letting us experiment with this and joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Kelly.